All right, uh, we are back to the same screen where we stopped the previous video. So basically, you can cancel this, uh, getting started, and open it again. So Commvault uh, basically shows you the steps that you need to do to do the perform the initial setup. So the first thing is the initial console configuration. This is basically done in the production environment where you need to register the product, configure the LX uh, for the log files and all these things, and you need to download any additional packages that you want uh, or any updates, hot fixes that you want to download. Basically, this directly connects to the cloud uh, of Commvault where you can download the service packs and all these things. And the name server where you can add an Active Directory and give it a particular host name and do the host name resolution. So this is uh, basically the getting started for the initial console configuration. So what I want to do is I don't want to do that. I just want to go and configure the storage. So this is the place where we configure the storage or modify the media agents or the storage media like the tape and the disk libraries. See, we, we don't have a tape uh, library here. So what I want to do is I want to configure a disk uh, storage. A disk library to the same, uh, to the, on, on the same server with a different share. So we select the available media agents. And we'll click Add Disk Library. Give it a name. It basically asks what, what is the device and uh, what are the different things. We are adding a new device. If there is another device which is already added, it will show you the selection path. So the basic folder name. We'll put backup dust backup destination the, the media agent we are going to select the same media agent we don't have a network share so what we are going to do is select a local path once I turn on uh, this NAS filer NetApp NAS filer so what I can do is I can give a particular network folder I will create a share there and I can give it there that is not a problem I am going to put it in uh, the share 2 which already has a lot of content in it. Uh, so I'm going to put it on the share too. Or it's best practice is to create a new folder, but I'm directly putting on the share too. So uh, the disk library is configured. You can see uh, the information here. Or you can go to the storage resources to the libraries and you can see the disk library and the status of the library you can see it here if it goes like uh, read only or, or um, error or something which need to troubleshoot on the particular disk library. So this is done and one more thing I want to show you is about uh, the configuration of the DR backup. We already selected the DR share and during the thing right so we need to go to the DR backup here and the share will be here so the number of full metadata backups to be retained is 5 it will only retain the 5 uh, backups on um, this particular share and we, we have all the other details here uh, like the log files and everything if you have any post or pre process scripts uh, you can uh, give them here the scans and process everything you can give them here so one more thing I want to show you is the job management. See, uh, basically by default, uh, we don't have uh, enabled it for do not start backups on disabled client. So if the backup is, if the client is disabled, then also the backup will start automatically on, on a default setting. So we need to select this option. So it will not start uh, backups for the disabled clients. We are going to enable multiplexing for Oracle. Uh, we don't have Oracle here. So that is something which we need to check when we are configuring Oracle. How many uh, how many backups that we are running and uh, how we do the multiplexing to a single uh, storage device. So queue schedule job, uh, jobs and all these are, these are all default settings and according to your um, you know priorities um, on your production environment, you need to change them. So this can be also used for the troubleshooting purpose when 
the job holds for a long time and it doesn't come you have uh, a chance to go here and check uh, what exactly are the settings on global scale these are the job priorities and all uh, you can actually change them uh, as you want the job restarts these all can be modified according to your production standards so that is one and i want to go to the control panel Uh, this is the place where you add or uh, deploy a new client or add some updates on it or something. Uh, one thing really uh, uh, like uh, really fascinating is like it, it's supporting Green Plum and Hadoop right now. Uh, the backups Hadoop uh, basically uses the disk the, the disk CP that's distributed copy between the nodes. Uh, you can configure the Hadoop uh, uh, the cluster for the backups uh, to convert. Uh, we have uh, Amazon EC2 instances uh, that we can copy, Azure Virtual Machines, uh, Red Hat KVM servers that we can do, um, Citrix Zen, Hyper-V and vCenter are most common. Uh, we will do uh, vCenter. In the later videos, I will try to make video on uh, the vCenter configuration. And this is the place where you set your user preferences. Uh, not really useful, but uh, uh, this is the where uh, you generate the, the reports on different clients. See, we already added one client uh, computer here, uh, which you can see, it's the main com serv uh, server, which we added already. So, we have uh, two agents installed on it. Uh, one is the file system IDA and the other one is uh, SQL IDA. So, we will run a backup uh, once we create the sub-client uh, policy on it and we will do a, perform a backup on this particular server. Uh, this is the license summary page where you can generate different reports on uh, the license, the capabilities of the license like the backend storage and all. And this is the place where you can check for the updates on uh, the entire console environment and also the version thing can be checked on the about page. The version uh, you can find it here, version 11, and the console ID is generated now. Once I registered it, uh, registered using my email address, you can see the console ID. And th this is uh, the granular level of uh, what are the different uh, versions and what updates are installed for different uh, components in, in, in the environment. So this is uh, the support page, uh, nothing much useful here. You can uh, check for the online help and search uh, the support, uh, the community articles and all these things. So let's go to the home page and go to the control panel. This is the com cell wide configuration of the com of, uh, of the backup settings and all the different things. See uh, when we did uh, the metrics reporting installation, uh, basically the metrics comes with two types like one is cloud metrics uh, reporting and the other one is private uh, metrics reporting. The cloud metrics reporting is basically used for the chargebacks and all the other things that we need to do. Uh, for example, if you are maintaining a uh, tenancy, you can uh, enable the chargeback and you can get a particular granular level recovery or granular level uh, reporting on, uh, on the entire environment. That is basically used for the tenants. Uh, we are not looking into that right now, but I installed it as a prerequisite. The SCOM is uh, Microsoft, um, you know, the Center Operations uh, Service Center for Operations Manager. Uh, this is where you can configure the SCOM and 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 manage it from directly from the Microsoft tool. No need to come uh, to Homeworld to manage the entire environment. 
So let's go and see uh, if we got uh, the page opened. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get it opened. Okay, it's asking to enable the JavaScript and load the page. All right. Anyway, I don't want uh, to do that right now. Uh, it can be done using the here. Uh, you can enable the JavaScript. This is a common issue which comes when you're opening the admin console. Uh, DR backup. We already had a look into the DR backup. Then let's. All these are uh, the console wide uh, configuration things which you can do. Identity and management is a place where you can add the new users. For example, if you're running uh, a particular, uh, one more thing. Uh, Uh, this is where basically you configure the ID data configuration for this uh, particular uh, entire, uh, you know, the com serve environment. You can use the local system account or you can do it on a particular system account where the console ID data configuration will be directly connected to this particular uh, configuration settings and you can take the backups from here. So that's it on uh, this. There are many other things that we can do uh, here. Uh, we can manage the certificates here, uh, console import export, the system wide configuration, whether you want to change the passwords, um, and all these things. Even you can do watermark settings and all. So that's it on this video. Uh, you can manage the replication here. That's it uh, for this video. Uh, I'll try to make other videos on uh, like taking the backup and doing the log backups and the uh, deduplication database backup and all the other things. I will try to make other videos um, and thank you very much for watching.